Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And it's good to see Tippy here today. Hi. And everyone, uh, we've had kind of a rough week here at the church this past week, and we're so hopeful that uh, everybody is doing well, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking more about that as the day goes on. Um, under announcements, uh, we have the prayer vigil Bible study at 11 on Saturday. I'm also going to announce about we're going to have a school supply giveaway again like we did last year. Um, we're going to do that on Saturday, August the 20th. And I'm just going to make an executive decision and say it's going to be at 6 o'clock like we did last year. Okay? Because we found the paperwork and found everything about it. And we said and we did it at 6 then. So that seemed like a good idea just to repeat it. And then uh, we'll get a list out next week. We, we had hot dogs and just some, a simple little thing out front, remember? And uh, so we'll be doing that uh, on the 20th. And we'll get more information out to you next week, okay, about getting those things. Uh, is there any other announcement that needs to be made for today? Anybody have anything? Any updates on anybody you might might want to say now or wait for those later? Okay. Birthday or anniversary? Nope. Okay. Well, then it looks like we're right up to our special music, and Nedra can come up and Nedra. Okay. Well, some Nedra and somebody, okay, that's it. We're
Okay, if we would, let's uh, stand and sing out of the blue hymnal, number 591, Rescue the Perishing, verses 1, 2, and 4. I don't look like Greg. Anyway, prayer concerns or thanksgivings? Family of Joanne Bowling. Anyone else? Pyatt family. Junior and Mary Lou, I don't know how I, I heard just a little bit ago from Phyllis that Mary Lou said Junior might get to come home today. So that's, that's a blessing and it's a prayer answered. So pray for you, keep praying for Junior and for Mary Lou. And for, for Greg, I don't know how great, uh, Josh was here yesterday, their son. He brought um, uh, the sermon for today to me and uh, he was more excited to see Glenn than anybody. He oh, I gotta see Glenn, I gotta see Glenn. So, cause Glenn, he said Glenn used to give him milk when he was just a little old fella at school. So he was more excited, so I wanna see Glenn. Anybody else? Andy Powell, if you don't know, have heard, uh, Greg talked about Andy. Andy, he went to school with Andy. And Andy is, has got cancer. He was a firefighter, or is, or was. And he's in hospice now. It's evidently has gone all through, his cancer's all through him. And uh, we just need to pray for him and his family and uh, his wife, Bev. And Mike Maynard, Mike Maynard is a gentleman that lives in our building and they took him to the emergency room and he had double pneumonia. They sent him, he came home when, day before yesterday. 
ended up taking him back to the ER. He has, uh, it was an atrial fib, and I assume he's still there. He's still in the hospital. So remember Mike Maynard and his family. Anybody else? Beth, remember Beth, and uh, she was real good friends with Dream of Pyatt, and it's really, I'm sure it's hit her very hard because she had gone to see um, Dream of the night before they left, is that right? And um, I know she's been asking prayer for her all this time, and uh, uh, I was told that Dream of decided not to have any more done, and she did pass away, and Beth was not here. So she heard it from afar, and I'm sure it's devastating. So pray for them, and they'll be traveling home. So need to pray for them and their traveling mercies. Anyone else? And who else, Patty? Joey Patrick and Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood. Okay. Ann. Uh, Susan Foster. She's not feeling well again, but she also requests prayer for Gabby, her students, and she's not here to do that, so let's pray for Gabby too. Anyone else? I know that Susan has a lot of problems with allergies and stuff especially this time of year. It's so hard on her, and we do need to keep Susan in our prayers. Phyllis. Anyone else? Anyone else? Before we pray. Um, uh, God is here and he's here waiting to hear your prayers and listening to all of us uh, thank you Jamie I appreciate that I, uh, when Greg asked me he called me from the, from the emergency room and asked me if I would do this and I hesitated because I am you know when you feel like you're uh, but you have to do what God wants you to do. So here I am, and here you are, and, and we're going to do this, and we're going to hear things that you need to hear through the, through the breath of God. He's speaking to all of us. That's the truth. And I've learned so much through this, and I'll tell you this, and I say this every Sunday. We have such a powerful, powerful Bible study in the back on Saturdays. My gosh. I, am, uh, I just can't explain what happens back there. This church, I'm telling you, is not dead. It is not dead. And praise the Lord. And we have learned that through our study. Uh, I just can't tell you. It's an Amworks upstairs and it's amazing what's going on here. You just I have to feel it and see it. And I'm so thankful for that prayer meeting and Bible study in the back. It is just so powerful. When we leave, we, don't, we forget about the time. We don't, we don't say we're leaving at this time. We don't do that. And it was 1.30 yesterday when we got home. I don't know about the rest of them, but, but we, it was just something. And we don't hurry. We don't tell God we're, we're, we're done. We don't do that. So it's been something for us. Anybody else before we pray? Candy's having an ultrasound of her throat Wednesday. Is that right? We need to pray for Candy. Candy can't hardly talk. She has something wrong with her throat. Uh, if they don't help her, we'll use an auger. That'll do it. We'll, we'll use an auger on you. Call the plumber. Anybody else? Anyone else? Last week, my granddaughter had some tests, and they came back positive. So. 
Oh, positive or negative? Positive. I thought you said it came back negative. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is Judy's, it's her granddaughter and uh, Mary's, but yesterday she wrote a note and said she was neg it was negative, but I understand now what she's saying. It's a positive good note. Positive thing. So. Anybody else? We're thankful for that. Anybody else? Thankful for everybody that's here. Everybody. Yes, we do. Yeah, she comes all the time. That's the reason I didn't say anything. Every time she's here, she comes. So, and she stays with Gail. And it's good to have you. Good to have you. Anybody else? Well, let's bow our heads and be in the presence of the Lord as we pray. Father God, Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you for getting everybody out of bed and, and giving them the steps to walk and the air to breathe that we can come here and be with you. And we can be with you anywhere, but when, we're, when we come to church, we're so close to everyone and closer to you. We do have so many on our prayer list. Lord, we pray for everyone on our uh, bulletin that needs your mighty healing touch. Uh, we especially pray for the family of Joan, Joan Bowling. We ask that you be with them. The Pyatt family. Be with Andy Powell and his family. We pray for Mike Maynard, who is in the hospital. We ask that you be with him. We pray for Beth and Danny and Jennifer and Barry as they're going to be traveling. And be with Beth as she comes home. To give her the strength, Lord. Speak to her today as we're praying that we'll give her the peace that she needs. We pray for Joy Patrick, Lord Jesus, and Kathy Wood. We ask that you be with them. We pray for healing for them, Lord. We lift up Susan to you, Lord. I know that she has so many problems with her allergies and so hard for her to breathe sometimes and, and what comes with it is coughs and not feeling good. And we ask, Lord, that you touch her. Help her to feel better. Um, Lord, we can only pray and we ask that you be with her. We pray for Gabby Pertuzit. We pray for this little girl that's got cancer. We ask that you be with her. We also pray for Phyllis going to be traveling to see her son, and we pray for her son, Seth. Lord, um, give him the strength that he needs. And I especially pray for Phyllis because, as I told her a little bit ago, there's something wrong with Phyllis, and she's all okay, but I know deep down that she is struggling with, some, struggling with something. And Lord, you know, and we lift her up to you. We also pray for Nedra and these blood tests that she had. We ask that you be with her and be with Candy as she's going to uh, uh, have tests on her throat. We ask that you uh, have the answers, Lord, that she needs. And, and Lord, just pray for everyone on our list. Be with Junior and Mary Lou. And thank you, Lord, that Junior will be, might be coming home today. We ask, Lord, that you continue to be with Mary Lou, the healing for her wrist. And we especially pray for Patty, Lord, as she, she, she comes to church and drags her little scooter along. And, and we pray for continued healing for Patty. I know it's, because Lord, I've been with it, been there. I know what it is, the patience that we need. But we also know that you were the guidance of the doctor's hands that uh, help Patty get through this surgery that she needs. And we ask that you be with her. We lift up our pastor to you, Greg Carter. Lord, we know that he's been sick and not feeling well for a while. But thank you, Lord, for leading him to the doctors that he needs. We pray, Lord, that you'll touch Greg for healing for Greg and be with Carol and Josh and Megan. As Megan or Josh said yesterday, we need prayer. And we ask, Lord, that you be with them. And Bring him back to us, Lord Jesus, as he heals and, and does what he's supposed to do. Pray for our country, Lord, in the turmoil and strife that's going on here. We said and we listen to news that's not good, and Lord, all we can do is pray. Be with all, our, all of our people that protect us, our police, our firefighters. Be with the unsaved in our midst, Lord. Be with them. 
We pray for each other, Lord, that's here today. A prayer for each one that's sitting in these pews and the ones that can't be here, we pray for them. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. We pray, Lord, that you'll lead and guide this service today in every way that needs to be done. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, at this time, let's worship with tithes and offerings. Okay, let's turn to hymn number 467. We'll do Trust and Obey, the first, second, and fourth verse.
and obey. Please be seated. Responsive reading, page 836 in your blue book. And while I'm, I want to thank, I'll tell you what, I want to thank Nancy for playing the organ yes. and uh, for Kevin doing this, this up here. It's um, when you're up here and you look out at everybody. And I was listening as we sang the song, Trust and Obey. Where I'll go, where God sends me, I will go. And that's what he's telling us. What, we, what he says we will do. We just have to trust and obey. Psalm 115 in your blue book, page 836. Not to us, O Lord, not to us. But to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but do not smell. Those who make idols are like them. So the oh Israel, trust in the Lord. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. May his, the Lord add his blessing to the reading of these words. It is um, Greg had this he's been doing dreams and in this today he's got dreaming dreams and opening doors he brought this to me I'd already I went to Jamie and I want to thank Jamie for that I called Jamie and he gave me the scriptures and I'd went through and, and uh, then I got Greg's and I thought no I'm going to do what Greg done let's talk about dreams and visions for a moment. In Old Testament times, dreams and visions were customary ways that the Lord communicated. Special revelations. You need to know his dreams for your life. Do you know that he has dreams for your life? From the very time he decided to create you, he had dreams for you. Every one of you. But I'm going to tell you this, God was not satisfied with possessing suns and stars. He wanted children. He wanted children and holy people, H-O-L-Y, holy. You are, as you became a Christian, he tells us in the Bible, you are holy, you are priest, you're apostles. You're able to do what he says. These children and holy people that he decided to create and wanted is God's inheritance. You are his inheritance as a Christian, not humanities not humanities. Believers are the glorious inheritance. 
Write that down. You are, the, you are a believer. You are a Christian. You are the glorious inheritance for God. Knowledge about all this is not enough. Einstein said, knowledge doesn't rule the world. Imagination does. And without, without a God-given dream, I'm dying. In other words, you can't know anything. You're dying. Knowledge, knowledge. Before I read on, I'm gonna to go to Ephesians chapter one, verses 18 and 19. What has God called you to share? What has God called you to share? Is that, I can't share nothing. I bet you would have something, one thing to share that God has called you to do. God's power toward his people can, they can be translated, I'm gonna, I want you to listen to these words. They can be translated as dynamic, energetic, mighty, and strong. He says that you can be from him dynamic, energetic, mighty, and strong. This power that he has given you belongs to every believer who will use it. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 says, I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future that, has, that God has called you to share. So I ask you again, what has God called you to share? Why are you here? God has called you to share the dream of, your future, of the future. Greg says, as your pastor, I'm praying, he's praying, that in the next few weeks, as he brings this to us, that you're going to get a new dream. What is your dream? Do y'all have dreams? Who, has a, who had a dream today? What are you going to do? Who had a dream? I had a dream. Doesn't have to be one when you're asleep, because they say they don't mean nothing. But what was your dream today before you leave here? Before you came to church, what was it? A new vision. God wants you to be, I want you to dream great dreams. Doesn't cost anything, not one penny, to dream. Not one penny to dream. So he says, I dare you to dream. I dare you to dream. Big dreams in the next weeks because everything starts with dreams. Now, this is important. Dreams show what God wants you to do through us. God had a dream for you and for me. I want you to think about what that dream is and will be. God wants to give you a dream of what he wants to do through you. He wants you to see your future. You say, well, I'm too old. Well, you're still here. You're still here. Have you fulfilled your future? Have you? Because if you can see just a little bit of your future, then you can cooperate with him. Now, it's not like his plan is all laid out for you to see from beginning to end, because if you could, if you could, it would scare you to death. If you could see into the future, and he tells us in the Bible, it would scare you to death. 
It's more like a paper, a scroll. And you roll it down a little bit at a time. And you read that part of a dream. And you do that. You just look up. Here's this scroll. And you're going down to, oh, okay. I had this dream. I can do that. I can do that. Then you roll it down a little bit more. And you do that. Then you eventually get to the end. But he's not going to give you the whole picture up front. He's giving you little bits and pieces. Little bits and pieces. I want us to get a peek of what God wants to do in your life. Human beings have many differences. As I told you before, dreams and visions, God give you these dynamic, energetic, mighty and strong things that you can be and do. You can use this power that he gave you. Human beings have many differences. We speak different languages, have different customs, and speak in different ways. Yet, and I want you to hear this, we are all God's children. I do not care who you are. Amen. What do you think God's dream is for you, for us? God's dream, he dreams that we will learn to love each other and live in peace forever. That's his dream for us. How do you think we're doing with that? How do you think we're doing? Not very good, are we? Genesis chapter 41, 32 says, God has given you two dreams. He's talking about Pharaoh. Joseph told Pharaoh, if you go to Genesis chapter 41, 32, Pharaoh had a dream. It troubled him a whole lot. So he called all these magicians to interpret the dream. But Joseph was the only one that could do it. And Pharaoh was not even a believer. Joseph told Pharaoh, he said, God has given you two dreams to let you know what he has definitely decided to do and that he will do it in the future. God let Pharaoh see in advance through a dream what was going to happen. There was going to be seven years a plenty, in other words, a lot of food, a lot of things, seven years. Then seven years of famine. And Pharaoh was going to be able to save his nation because God gave him a peak in advance. Isn't God gracious? Isn't he gracious to say, I'll give you, I'll let you have, if you do what I tell you, I will save your nation. He had a chance. Dreams define us. We shape our dreams, and then our dreams shape us. But if you don't have any dreams, what happens? You don't have any definition of your life. What was your dream when you were growing up? What did you want to be from a child? Children have dreams. What was your dream as you were growing older? I heard somebody say not too long ago, when they said, you was this when you were in school. That wasn't my dream. That was my mom's dream. It wasn't my dream. So what dreams did you have? What do you have today? One of the biggest problems in society is identity confusion. Who am I? Where am I going? Have you ever said that? Who am I? I've said it. I admit it. What am I doing here? What am I supposed to be doing? What is life all about? 
Does my life even matter? Have you ever said that? Be honest. Have you ever said that? Why am I here? What am I, why do I have anything that matters? Doesn't matter, what am I doing here? If you don't have God's dream, then you don't have definition to your life. God's dream for you. God's dream. No matter what your situation, whatever it may be, no matter how undesirable it may be, consider it a part of your training program for serving God. I'm going to ask you a question. How have you been doing with this training program? How have you been doing with this training program that God has given you? What would you say? Would you have an A, a B, a C, a D, an F? How do you think we're doing? We, me, you, we have dreams for our church, our family, our friends, neighbors, anyone you meet. You have dreams for this church? Do you? Well, I'm too old. Um, I've been here long enough. I'm done. That's it. I'm done. But yet, you want it to flourish. So how are we doing with that? How are we doing with that? Are we doing very good? Would you say yes or no? Something to think about. You don't know who you are and make sure you got the right dream because you don't want to be dreaming the wrong way. So I have questions sometimes about what we dream about. Do we let somebody lead us into something we really don't want? The dream that we had? And they, oh, you can do that. You can do that. Go ahead and do it. But then you say, that's not my dream. That's what we do. When we, when we think of God's dream for us, do you love everybody? Do you look at everybody and say, I love them? Do you? Can you reach your arms around them and hug them? Can you? No matter what they look like, no matter what color they are, no matter what language they speak, no matter how different they are from you, can you? Can you do that? So you don't want your dream to go the wrong way. Let's talk about Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 through 23. Your eye is the light for your body. Your eye is like the window to your soul. The lamp for your body. If your eye if your vision is good, if your eye or vision is good, who doesn't have good vision around here? Who doesn't have good eyes? Well, we can all raise our hands, but God says, you, you have a dream. You can see, you can read with your eyes in that dream. Your eye is bad. Your whole life will be full of darkness. How do you feel? Your dream defines you. A great dream will define a great person. A small dream will define a small person. An evil dream will define an evil person. It's your choice. What do you want? What do you want your dream to be? I... I I didn't plan on being up here. I love learning about the Lord. I love learning from my Bible. I love learning. I love the questions that God has brought to me from other people. 
I love it. So have you picked your dream wisely? Make sure it's the dream God has for your life. A dream keeps you growing. A dream forces you to develop skills that you don't have. A dream. We have to be learning on a curve our entire life. You learn your entire life. Every day you learn something new. Every day. You could say, well, I walked up that step. I didn't know there's a crack in that step. That's what you learned. There's a crack in that step. You learn something new every day. You don't even know what you're good at until the dream pulls it out of you. And you go, have you ever, and I say this all the time, I cannot do that. We're starting crafts over to where we live. And I've said it, Sue will tell you, I cannot do that. She says, yes, you can, Karen. I said, no, I can't. But she says, you're going to do it. And that's what God says. You, you are going to do it. You have a dream. You can do it. You can say, I didn't know I had that. I didn't know I had that skill. I didn't know I had that spiritual gift. Each one of you in this room today has a spiritual gift. Every one of you. I bet when Nancy learned to play the organ or the piano, I've heard her say I was 17, when it was 15, when her grandpa said, you're going to come and play that. You're going to come and look at her. How long has she been here? And she probably said at the time, I can't. I can't. He probably said, oh, you're going to. So here she is, a skill did she dream of it? I don't know. But God said, you have a skill that you can use. It's the dream that forces you to be bigger and grow beyond yourself. He says here, I've come to the conclusion there aren't any great people. There are only great dreams. And when an ordinary person goes after a great dream, then they become a great person. We are all born the same way. Spiritual vision is our capacity to see clearly what God wants us to do and to see the world from the point of view. But your spiritual vision can be easily clouded by what? What can your spiritual vision be easily clouded by? Your self-serving desires, your interest, and goals block that vision. Why? Because you're afraid to move on. Jesus contrasted heavenly values with earthly values. When he explained that our first loyalty should be to those things that do not fade, cannot be stolen or used up and never wear out. And do we have that? Where does your loyalty lie as a child of God? Where does your loyalty lie? We know nothing. We're just ordinary people but some grab hold of an extraordinary dream and become an extraordinary people. He says, I want people to go. That's the church. You came here. You said, this is a church I want to be. This is a church that doesn't know any better than to believe in God and dreams, great dreams, and they attempt to great things and expect great things from God. Do you? Do you expect dreams and great things here? Amen. Most of the things in your life that
that control your life, you had no choice. You didn't choose your parents or when or where you were born. That's all God's choice. Did you choose your parents? Did you choose where you were going to grow up? Believe God for a little. You have little. Believe God for more and you'll have more in your life. And if you believe God for great things, what's going to happen? God will do great things in your life and in this church. Believe God for big dreams and God will do big dreams in your life. In Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 15, the Apostle Paul says, I know I am not yet what God wants me to be. Well, I'm not at all that God wants me to be either. Are you what God wants you to be? None of us are what God wants us to be completely. Are you what God wants you to be completely? I'm not yet what God wants me to be. I haven't reached that goal, that dream, but I keep moving toward it to make it mine because Christ made me and he saved me for this. You were saved to make a difference. I know that I haven't yet reached my goal, but there is one thing, one thing I always do, forgetting the past and straining toward what is ahead. The dream ahead of you, I focus on the goal so that I may one day win the prize that God has called me to receive to Christ and life above. What, have you, what are you going to receive? And the dream ahead of you, eternal life, a crown, eternity in heaven with Jesus. He has called me and you to receive the dream that he had for us. The mark of spiritual maturity is to have a dream that's so big I couldn't possibly do it on my own. Can you do what you dream of on your own? Can you? I'm going to need other people in my life. I'm going to need a small group. I'm going to need support if your dream doesn't scare you. Are you scared of your dream? Are you? My dream is too small and doesn't require real faith. So as Greg says, as he does this dreaming, dreams and opening doors, are you, for the next several weeks, are you willing to be in this dream? Are you? By now in your life, you have learned that you can't do everything. But you hopefully, you've learned not everything's worth doing. Have you learned that? Not everything's worth doing. What do you think about that? Do you think everything, I left dirty dishes down there. Hey, not worth doing right now. You know, any other time I'd have done them. But I thought, not worth doing right now. I got more important things. Some things are more important. It's more important for me to be here. God doesn't expect you to do everything. Do you think he does? The key to life is selection. To know what matters and what doesn't. Being famous is not worth a second of your life. Did you want to be famous? Do you have anybody famous in this room? I know someone, Jesus, but he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, I'm famous. Because one minute you're the hero, the next minute you're nothing. That's a proven fact. Trophy hunting is a dumb goal. 
because given enough time, all your trophies are going to be thrown out. That's true. We've had yard sales and been trophies thrown in them. You think, well, why'd they do that for? Whatever record you set is going to be broken by somebody else. That is oh so true, amen? You need a dream that affects eternity. You need a dream that affects your place in heaven, if that's where you want to be. A dream that focuses my energy. 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 26 says, Paul says this, I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. That's the dream. His purpose driven, I fight to win. I'm not shadow boxing, just punching the air, or just playing around. You waste a lot of time when you don't know the dream for your life. Dreams stretch our faith. The Bible says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. A worthwhile dream forces me to trust God. A dream keeps me going. If you don't have a dream, you're going to burn out and give up when things don't work out. Every dream has delays. It's going to take the rest of your life. But if you have a dream, do y'all have a dream now? Have, have you got a dream now? It actually gives you the ability, the motivation to keep going when you feel like giving up. Greg says, I want to give up every Monday, every Monday morning. Because why? He felt like that sermon stunk. Surely someone could have done a better job. I felt the same way. Because you think, that wasn't good enough. It didn't help anybody. Why? Because we look out in the crowd and you're looking at them and saying, yep, I've called, I had an altar call, nobody came. I've told them a lot of things, didn't even penetrate nothing. Hardly anybody said hallelujah, amen. Nobody wanted to sing the songs. That's what happens. What needs to be is that you want to become, we want you to become all God made you to be. You have a purpose in this life. Passing on towards the goal is to know Christ, to be like Christ. In case you don't remember, in case you don't remember, what does Christian mean? Oh, hear that? Christ-like. And to be all Christ has in mind for him. We must, we have to press on towards God's plan, purpose, and prize. When Job lost everything, he said, I don't have the strength to endure. Why? Because I don't have a goal that encourages me to carry on. Do you have a goal that encourages you to carry on? Pain doesn't make you give up. It's pain without a purpose that makes you give up. I'll tell you a little story for a second. When I was, had my, hurt my leg really bad, I was in a nursing home. I cried every day. I cried every day because I was there. One of the therapists came in and he said, Karen, what do you want? I said, I want to go home. He said, you're going home. I had a purpose. I had a purpose. I had a plan. I had a dream. I wanted to go home. I wanted to go home and be with my husband. I wanted to go home to my home. And I did it. I did it. Praise the Lord, I did it. They told me I couldn't, but I did it. You can do it. You can do it because you have a purpose-driven life. 
Without a purpose that makes you give up. Humans have the ability to handle enormous amounts of pain like the people who survived the Holocaust. They had a dream bigger than the pain and the people who didn't give up or the people that gave up. A great dream inspires others to dream. There's nothing like the feeling of knowing you've been used by God. A dream inspires others to dream. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 27 says, if your goals, your dreams are good, you will be respected. Now, self-centered goals are not going to be respected, but unselfish, godly goals, big dreams, great plans to make a difference and help people and make the world a better place brings respect and it's going to take self-discipline to reach your dream. Self-discipline that will be rewarded in heaven. Self-discipline that will be rewarded in heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 says, All athletes practice strict self-control. They do it to win a prize that will soon fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. Finally, God-given dreams are a gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 18, has Peter prophesying. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I want you to listen to this. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams on all, all, all my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit on those day, in those days, and they will proclaim my message regardless of gender or age. The last days include all the days between Christ's first and second coming, and it's another way of saying from now on. From now on, the great and glorious day of the Lord is a mark or sign of the whole Christian age. You are in the Christian age. Even Moses yearned for the Lord to put his spirit on everyone. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has, was released throughout the entire world to men, women, slaves, Jews, Gentiles. Now everyone can receive the Holy Spirit. You're invited every day in church, no matter where you're at, to come and receive this Spirit. God is waking, waiting for you to make you a stronger human for him as he created you to do. Um, this message was so powerful for me because we, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, we need to remember that God is calling you. He created you for that. Nancy, if you'll play our last song. Um, I don't even have my bullet. I don't want to die with it. Do what? Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Everybody stand. Everybody stand.
benediction to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault or with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore amen thank you Lord for this day